All right, so you're considering moving to Tampa, Florida. Well, three years ago, my wife and I sold everything we own, packed up our family, and headed south. Coming from the Midwest, it was gonna be a huge jump. And what we wanted to do is share all the pros and all the cons that we've experienced, and we're gonna do that with you guys right now. Hey everyone, it's Juan Alcala with the True Living Group here in Tampa, Florida. And in this channel, we're gonna talk all about living the Tampa life, what it's like to live here, what it's like to be here, what it's like to experience that Tampa living, all the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches and the sunshine. And if that interests you, we're gonna to get to that right now. So today I wanna to run through my pros and cons list of what it's like to live in Tampa. So I started the story off telling you guys how it went, right? My wife and I, we've been talking about moving to Florida for almost 10 years. We had worked our tail off trying to get everything organized uh, to make the move from Metro Detroit uh, to Florida and just really experience what the South had to offer. And we looked at a lot of different cities before we made our decision. We looked at towns like Jacksonville. We looked at Orlando. All the places you look at on a map when you're moving from the Midwest down to what you think the Florida life's going to be. And you know, we stumbled upon Tampa and that wasn't on purpose. We actually, it wasn't even on our list. It was probably down on the, you know, five to 10 range, not number one, I can tell you that. Um, but what happened was I was in Orlando at a marketing conference um, and, you know, we just decided we want to pop over and check out the West Coast. And we've been to Clearwater. We've done those things in the past, but it just never was on our radar. And, you know, we've got three young kids. At the time, my oldest was six. Uh, my daughter was four. And we just had a newborn. She was 10 months old. Um, and we came and we just fell in love with the beaches, guys. Now, the white sand um, and, and the, the calm beaches are... Are a vast stark difference from what you find on the east coast where you've got riptides and the ocean does what the ocean does and not one's good or bad or but for us in our in our life cycle right now it was super important to to get in a place where my wife is going to feel comfortable and somewhere where we could go and put the kids on the beach and not have to worry about them being drug out to sea i know right it's crazy but that's you know when you're a parent you think like that so the number one thing we're going to talk about and it's the most obvious and it's the one that everyone discusses it's the weather right you move to Florida because the sun shines. And it's one of my favorite things about our move. And, and not only just the move, but our mood. And when I say that, you know, my friends ask me all the time, like, what's the biggest difference between living in Detroit and living in Florida? And this is what I tell everybody and anyone we meet people, you know, we get a lot of, of vacationers that come to the area. Um, and one of the things they ask is, you know, what's the biggest difference between here and X? And the one thing I will say immediately is you do not have to shovel sunshine. And coming from the Midwest where the winters are gray, where you might only see the sun five or six times a month, um, and where you're outside and your nostrils are sticking together in the winter and you're just over it, right? Come February, there are car parts on the side of the road. The roads are filled. I mean, it's just nonsense. And when you come down here, the sun shines all the time. And I, we didn't even recognize how much it changed our mood overall, but it did, guys. And what, what we, what we found, <laughs> found out was that when it would stay cloudy for two or three days here, which is very rare, our mood would get off. And all of a sudden that kind of clicked in our mind, like, oh my goodness, this has changed so much for us. So obviously the number one pro is the sunshine, right? Now let's talk about the weather because that is also a pro and it could be a con too, depending on the time of year. Um, now coming from the north, you know, we, we experience things a little bit differently. We have four seasons, you know, and some of them are shorter than others, but we do have four seasons. Um, Florida has basically two seasons. It has hot <laughs> and uh, we would call it fall slash spring slash winter. That's kind of, all three of those get lumped into one. 
everything's green all the time, which is amazing. And during the winter, like right now, we're actually experiencing a cooler type winter um, where it's been 60 degrees, 60 to 70 degrees every day, which is awesome. That's great weather, sunshine on every day. You can be outside doing everything you want. But in the summer, guys, and I'm just gonna share the truth with you here, you know, July, August, September, it's hot. And when I say hot, I mean like, it's like a blast furnace. Um, I had a friend of mine who uh, I met over in Fort Lauderdale one time and <laughs> he said, have you ever been through a Gulf summer before? I said, no. And um, he said, it's like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing right in your face. And I had not experienced it, but man, if he wasn't spot on. So what ends up happening is during the summer, People get up really early. They get all of their outside work done, some mowing the lawn or whatever it is. They try to wrap all that stuff up by 10 o'clock in the morning at the latest. And then once the sun goes down late at night, you'll see people start to get active again. So that is also, you know, our, our greatest strength can also be a weakness at that time. Now, that's three months out of the year. And I was willing to sacrifice three months of sweating and having to take extra showers um, and changing clothes probably more often than I liked. Um, to sacrifice that for shoveling snow, being gray all the time, being cold all the time, and quite frankly, just being miserable because of the weather. So to me, it was worth the rub. All right. So we talked about sun sign. We talked about beaches, outdoor living. Obviously, um, we we came from a place where out the great outdoors is is serious. That's as serious as it comes, right? Michigan has some of the most beautiful outdoor spaces, the Great Lakes, pictured rocks. I mean, we can go on for days about all those things, and those are awesome. Florida also has their own, you know, and we've got you know some of the greatest beaches in the world right here and in the area so if you move into tampa you know when you get over to the clearwater area you've got the clearwater beach which is always ranked as one of the best beaches in the country um, you've got saint petersburg beach or saint pete beach as they refer to it also another beach that's ranked highly you go further south you get into sarasota you've got sand keys it's just amazing down here so the beaches are outstanding. The parks are outstanding. There is a lot of emphasis on taking care of the parks and the communities. So obviously there's a lot of act outdoor activity there. Biking trails for days. We've got all of that stuff here. So that's a huge pro. Another pro that I experienced when I made that, that leap was the quality of the roads. Now coming from Metro Detroit, the Motor City, um, the one thing I will say about being from Detroit is our roads were some of the worst in the country. I mean, and we travel a lot, my wife and I did. And what we kept experiencing is, you know, we would go places and be like, man, <laughs> you know, for, for a place that talks about automobiles all the time and, and leading the world with auto, with auto, our roads are some of the worst in the country, hands down. And when we got down here, that was a huge change for us. You know, if you hit a pothole now, it is like, holy cow that what was that because that was the standard before um so that's uh, another thing that is definitely different uh another point is the fact that we don't taxes i want to talk about taxes because um you know florida is a state where you don't have a state income tax so making that move for us was was a huge win the other thing that we noticed was property taxes now I don't know what area you're coming from, but I do know that a lot of areas in the country have extremely high tax rates. We've got friends in Chicago, they pay astronomical uh, amounts of taxes. We paid a pretty high tax rate, rate in Metro Detroit as well. Uh, and we come down here and we live in Pinellas County, which is just west of Tampa. Uh, and our tax base on a $400,000 house is just over $4,000. So I'm trying to give you guys perspective. I don't know what that is for you in your area. That might seem like a lot. There are other areas if you go north near Wesley Chapel or if you start heading east into Brandon Riverview if you get out further in Lutz there are other areas where taxes are less expensive but for us a $400,000 home in the metro Detroit area was going to be roughly between six and eight thousand dollars in taxes so that's a big win we were excited about that all right affordability now the one thing i want to talk about is everybody's area you know if you're coming from a, a place um it, you know in in central u.s housing's probably pretty affordable but if you're coming from any of the bigger cities you know los angeles san diego um you know austin texas at this point uh denver colorado affordability is a huge issue um finding homes that are under the median um uh, 
national average is is very challenging. And and here in uh, in the Tampa area, affordability is still there. It's still attainable. If you put us up against Miami or Austin or any of those cities, you know you can still find a great home somewhere in the Tampa area, which is amazing. Obviously, if you get towards the coast, things start to get really expensive really quick. Look, guys. Oceanfront property is not being made ever again. So that's never going down in price unless it's starting to go away. Um, and that's not the one you want to buy anyway. So just kind of keep that in perspective. If you live a little bit more inland, affordability starts to skyrocket. It gets really good. Um, if you start to move towards the coast, it gets more expensive. That's pretty standard, I think, where most people are from. We have access to a major airport. The Tampa airport is phenomenal. If you've never been there before, guys, you can be in and out of that place so quick. It's There's so efficient it's so well designed flights coming in and out of, out of here every day it is a wonderful place to take off i love uh, uh traveling out of tampa airport it's been it's been incredible um the growth in the city now here's one of the things i did want to talk about because um tampa is expected to be one of the best real estate markets in the entire country this year and that ties back into the affordability thing that we were talking about earlier um, because of places like austin and miami that have gotten so expensive that now they're becoming what people feel is out of reach so you know people are moving to places like tampa like tucson you know they're, they're making the move south but they're looking for places where they can still get in at a reasonable um price range. So that's awesome. So now we're talking about a lot of the pros. I want to move over to some of the other things that you may not love. And one of the things I definitely want to make point of is um, we're going to talk about the bugs, guys. Because coming from a place where you have a deep freeze every year <laughs> and it kills a lot of the, 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 the creepy crawlers um, and then you get down here, it is an awakening that I was not ready for and I know my wife wasn't ready for. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, the spiders are one thing. We've got a pool, which we're very fortunate. We love it. Kids play in it every day. I swim in the pool every day. It's awesome. And we've got what they call a bird cage. And it's just a giant screen over our pool. And that's good because it keeps the bugs out, right? Like mosquitoes. Um, the, the negative to that is the fact that the spiders love to live in it. And they make we have some some unique spiders down here that make the most beautiful web. It's like the type of things you see on National Geographic. But that's not awesome when you're walking out of your house and you walk into one of those webs and they're all up and down your pool. It's crazy. They're everywhere. Okay, so that's one thing. But the biggest <laughs> the biggest thing, it's not been the mosquitoes. They're there. They're bad. You know, we had some really you know, wet areas in Michigan. So we're used to bad mosquitoes. But if you're not, you're going to get some mosquitoes down here. Just know that that's happening, especially during the summer. But the big thing is, guys, it's the cockroaches. And they've, I don't know who was in charge of marketing, but they even gave the cockroaches a cute little name. So they didn't have to call them cockroaches. And they called them palmetto bucks. And y'all, when you see these things, they are, I mean, they're like this big. You can put a saddle on them and ride them. And us being from Detroit, completely ignorant of the situation, we had no idea what to expect. We move into our new home, we're here, and all of a sudden we're sitting on the couch a few, you know, probably the first week after we'd moved in. And I remember this bug coming across the floor. And it was, you could hear it. That's how big it is. You could hear the cockroach walk. That's how, it just blew my mind. And, you know, of course, my wife's freaking out. I, gra I grab a tissue and I go over to kill it. And the thing rolls over on its back and plays dead. I'm not kidding you guys. It plays dead. And the roach is like this big. And when you approach a roach like that, like <laughs> one piece of paper towel is not going to do it. So, you know, if you, and if you go get a shoe, it's going to be exploded everywhere. So like, man, and I don't mean to be graphic, but this is real life, guys. So you kill it. Okay. You know, we weren't expecting that, but no big deal, right? Bugs happen. And we've heard, you know, the cockroaches were big down here or whatever, right? Probably three days later, my daughter comes out of her room screaming bloody murder. There's a bug in there. I run in there. There's another palmetto bug. Um, and okay, so I run and grab some tissue. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go kill this thing. And guys, I ran up on this thing and <laughs> it flew. Oh. It levitated off the ground. The creature's this big. It levitated off the ground. And I got to tell you, I ran out of the room screaming. 
have you seen the movie The Great Outdoors where John Candy's in there? Or or better yet, uh, uh, Christmas Vacation where the squirrel comes out and everybody loses their mind? That's what was happening in our house. We had a flying cockroach that was probably two inches big flying around the house. Everybody was going crazy. So needless to say, um, the exterminator got called. We now have a bug service. We <laughs> comes out every month, but they are there, guys. And they are the big boys. They come in the garage, and you just got to be ready for them. So I know that's a tangent, but man, be ready for the roaches because it's real deal. If you can't stand them, don't come because you're going to find them. All right. So the other uh, con that we found uh, was the energy cost. And I want to talk about this. Now, I know energy cost is different all over the country. So compare it to what your experience was, but I want to compare it to ours. Um, in Metro Detroit, we were paying roughly between $200 and $300 a month for our utilities, which would include heat and gas. We had a forced furnace, forced air furnace, and a, um, a forced air um, air conditioning system. And when you move to Florida, most people don't have a have heat. You'll have a fireplace because you don't need it. Um, some 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 do have a heater, but the AC runs nonstop. The units are huge. We have a brand new air conditioner and it's enormous, but it still takes a ton of energy to run that thing, especially in the summer months when it's 90 degrees, 90 plus degrees all day, every day. Um, it just runs. And our average utility bill is right around $300, which may or may not be a lot to you, but to us, it was probably a $50 or $60 increase just on that one alone. Uh, number two, water is expensive here. And I wanna talk about water for a minute because it's super important. Coming from the Midwest, we had the Great Lakes. We had some of the best water in the world. Um, we've come to Florida where essentially you're on an island and we've experienced some of the worst water we've ever drank. We will, will not drink the water. We get um, spring water directly um, and just refuse to drink the water out of there. If you look at our neighbors, all of their lawn is colored in rust <laughs> because that comes up from the wells that they're using for the water. Um, it coats the dishes if you don't have a reverse osmosis uh, filtering system. So that can be part of that, um, that cost that's associated with it. And it's expensive. You know, maybe it's because we had the Great Lakes, but that was our experience. And now water is expensive to us. Um, the other thing from a utility perspective is trash. We've got a lot of options for trash pickup, but it seems awfully expensive for me. We, you know, we had that rolled into our taxes back in Metro Detroit. And again, we did talk about how we get, you know, basically 20% less. So I guess it's fair, but our at, we pay 50 bucks a month to have somebody pick up the trash. So I thought that was a lot. Um, another one is traffic. Now, if you're coming from New York, Chicago, uh, LA, then you're gonna think Tampa traffic's amazing. But if you're coming from anywhere where you've got a healthy interstate system um, and it runs fairly smooth, I mean, you're gonna have the 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then you know the, the four o'clock to seven o'clock, just anywhere in the country, I expect that. Um, but when you come here, the one thing that is different for, from our experiences is the, the timing of the lights. Um, we would sit at a stoplight in back home at about for about 45 seconds here. If you get caught at a light, the way that they're timed and cycled, it could take you almost four minutes before you're able to go. So, um, I always tell my friends that you could knit blankets at, at the stoplights and that's, that's for real guys. So that's another thing. Uh, another thing we want to talk about is the allergies. Now, I myself am not a seasonal allergy sufferer. I used to be, used to get hay fever. I've grown out of that, I think. I just don't get them anymore, which is awesome. But we came down here and my wife's allergies have exploded. And I mean exploded, guys. Twice a year down here now, what happens is the pollen shakes off of everything. And it's so thick that you can literally go out and write your name on it on your car windshield because and it's covered in pollen and that is a lot and so if you have an, uh, a sensitivity to pollen there are a couple times a year when it gets really aggressive you know in the springtime for us basically we have kind of like two spring seasons because of the way the weather cycles work um, which is awesome because you have all these beautiful flowers and all this greenery all the time but one of the, you know, again, the, the con to that is the allergies that come along with it. So you got to be mindful of that to you. Medication, make sure you know what's going on there. Take care of yourself. And then um, the last thing I want to talk about on, on the con side before I get back to, you know, some really good stuff. And I don't, I'm not trying to be negative. I just want to share our experience because for my wife and I, we grew up in the food industry 
we you know she worked in fine dining we both had wonderful experiences and we consider ourselves to be foodies um self-proclaimed by the way we're not critics and we you know we don't beat up on anybody that's not the point uh but we love good food and one of the things that we've experienced so far in the area is that cuisine is not top of mind so if that's important to you know that it's going to be they're here guys there are great restaurants here so don't don't let me put that in your mind that they don't exist but what i want you to understand is it's not the standard okay we have a lot of coastal areas um which by nature usually kicks up a lot of um you know tourist trap type of cuisine um where it just has to be a little bit above uh, above you know what you would standard ex- uh, accept at any diner and everybody you know is, is satisfied with that but if you're looking for you know that five star that chef you know like if you're you know coming from new york or chicago or you know louisville's got some of the best cuisine in the country right denver los angeles those areas where it's really culinary culinary focused <laughs> couldn't get that out um then it's going to be a shift and you know remember we talked about the water well if you you know i I brewed beer for a long time i was in the beer business and you know if you don't have good water it's really hard to make good beer it's almost impossible no matter how good your recipes are and with the water not being the best in the world here that definitely makes things difficult right because you make bread, pasta, all the stuff that we love to eat comes from water, right? And if you don't have good water, it's a struggle. And I think that that's probably part of it. But mostly it's just not, you know, food focused or food forward. That's probably the better word I would say. There are great restaurants here. I'm going to help you discover them just so you know, because we love to eat and we travel and we do that. So you're going to experience those things. But the last thing I want to share with you guys is, you know, listen, our experience here has been outstanding. When we came down, my wife and I thought that we were going to snowbird. We thought that we would come down, grab a winter place, go back up to Michigan for the summer because that's what you do when you're from the Midwest. Um, and we came down, uh, bought our house sight unseen, moved in December 2nd. And then uh, by April uh, uh, of 2019, my wife was like, we're not going back. So having said all of those negatives, I'll tell you right now, all the positives handily outweigh them from the outdoor experiences that you're able to live every single day to the accessibility to the beach guys you know if you're in tampa you're only an hour and a half away from disney which is awesome you're less than 40 minutes away from clearwater beach depending on traffic you could be there in 30 minutes um it's just some outstanding living here the sun shines every day and it's just a beautiful place to live guys so Um, I hope that this video has helped you a little bit. We're going to continue to do videos like this. We're going to share our experiences. We're going to share the good, the bad, and the ugly with you guys about what it's like to live like in Tampa and uh, and live the Tampa life. That's what we said. And we're going to do that. So listen, subscribe, hit the bell below so you can get notified every time we drop a new video. And if you are going to relocate to the Tampa area, reach out to my team, the True Living Group, the number is right here below. Um, I'd love to help you guys move that. We're getting calls from all over the country, people asking how to move, where's the best place to relocate, and we're going to help you guys do that. So look forward to catching you guys on that next video. Go out, live the Tampa life.